This is an interesting rock here. Some kind of conglomerate. And I'm wondering if I could make this into a sphere. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make a rock sphere. I'm going to use this rock. This rock I found last weekend, July 4th, along the Nueces River, outside Uvalde, Texas. I don't know if this rock will polish. I really have no idea what it will look like, but it's interesting. So I thought I would give it a shot. My Highland Park sphere machine only has this one size grinding cup, which allows for, oh, anywhere between about a three to four inch diameter sphere. The middle range, this one's about three and a half inches. I think this one will be fine at three and a half inches. It's a little bit bigger than the three and a half in its narrowest area. It's plenty big that way. So now my challenge will be to get this in my slab saw and clamp it in such a way where I can hold it while I make two cuts so I can have nice parallel edges. So I'm gonna mark this thing up and get it on the saw. Now show you what happens next. Okay, as you can see, I've got the rock clamped in. I made some marks. I'm gonna make a cut here. And then I'm going to move the carriage just about all the way in and make another cut here. This is approximately my center point here. I was barely able to get it in there with enough force so that it wouldn't fall out because as you can see there's a lot of weight hanging out. But hey, that's, that's what the rock gives me. The nice thing is once I make this first cut, when this cap comes off, I'll have an idea of what this rock looks like on the inside and whether or not it's going to be a a beautiful sphere or just a, an ugly rock. So I'll let you know as soon as this is finished. Okay, the first cut is done. Let's see how it looks. Well, it's interesting. I don't know that it's going to be great see about this side here. Yeah, maybe it'll polish up nicely. We'll see. I'll keep going with this. Now I'm going to make the second cut. Okay, I've got it all lined up for the second cut. And once this is done, I'll have my two parallel cuts and I'll be able to mount it in my little sphere making jig and I'll, I'll show you all that here next. All right, there's the final slab. Now the stone is on the jig. And this is the important part. You want to have the stone centered in such a way that the narrowest edge just lines up with the blade. Once you have this set, you do not want to move the carriage at all for the rest of this cutting. Otherwise you will go with some egg-shaped <laughs> uh, preform. So I've got this in there. The narrowest angle Right about there. Um, this dimension here is equal or slightly bigger than, than this dimension. So we should be good to go. What I'm going to do is lock this into these different discrete positions and let it cut. And I will show you the results. Here's what it looks like after the first 12 cuts. I probably could have moved the carriage in a little bit tighter. As you can see, I got areas I didn't really hit, but I was trying to maximize the uh, size of this thing. It'll be okay, it'll all get ground out. It's turned into a sphere. So now I'm going to reposition it in the, in the jig and 
do 12 cuts with this rotation. Okay, here we've got this now done on two different sides. It's starting to look a little like a sphere, but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start chopping off these angles. So there you go. It's starting to look like a sphere. And at this point I could stop and take it to my cabbing machine and grind down these peaks. Or I can put it back in the slab saw and make a series of smaller cuts. Which I think is what I'm going to do. I'm finally done with the cutting. So now I've made this preform. You can see all the trimmings that it took. That was a lot of cutting. So the next step will be to take this to my cabbing machine and grind down these little edges. Here it is, my preform. I've got most of the high points ground down so it's close to a sphere shape. The next step will be to put it in the actual sphere making machine and to get it perfectly round, perfectly spherical. As you can see, there's not a lot of color in it. It's probably not a particularly interesting looking rock, but I think if it takes a good shine, It'll still look good when I'm finished. All right, let's get started. I've got the big Covington discs on there now. The Covington types are the ones where you have to add the actual grid. to get the water drip how I like it. So here I'm just going to add a little bit of silicon carbide. Just silicon carbide, 60-90 grit. Let that start grooving into the cups. And uh, in a little bit you'll see a slurry develop. And then it'll start shaping, start rounding itself. After a few minutes you can see how developed a nice slurry. I also added more tension. I stuck another bungee around. So it'll go like this for a little while and all those low spots, those low flat spots will be ground down. And at that point I will switch over to the Highland Park sphere cups and start going through the grit stages to get to a polish. Well as you can see there are still a couple of little pits. But I'm not going to chase those down because in my experience those little pits will just keep forming. It's probably just small rocks within the conglomerate that pop out. So I can't just keep chasing those down for a perfectly smooth sphere. Otherwise the sphere will disappear. Alright, here's what it looks like just rinsed off. Of course it doesn't have that real shine, that's just the water. It's funny though, there is this one little spot, this one little like a little nipple right here that didn't grind down and I don't know why. It looked like I had good random motion. I know the next cup will knock it down, but I just think that's funny. Except to my eye, this looks like a terrazzo floor. Kind of weird. It's just so strange. Okay, as you can see, I've got the Highland Park 80 grit sphere cups on. They're different. They have the segmented sections. I don't know what will happen when that bump, that so-called nipple hits one so I've circled it so I can keep an eye on it, not to make it look like a, more of a boob, more of a 
with an areola or anything. So let's see what happens when I turn this on. This is what it looks like after the 80 grit Highland Park grinding cup. No more mysterious nipples anywhere, it's nice and smooth. Well, it's not really smooth, it's loaded with scratches, which is what you would expect at 80 grit. And I've got it dry right now. So next goes the 220 grit. Just like tumbling stones or making cabochons, you want to make sure that the 220 grit takes care of all these scratches. There you can see, as I zoom in, what I'm talking about. So after I let this thing run on the 220 grit grinding cup for a while, I want to make sure that when it's dry, those are all gone. That way I know I'll get a much better polish. Just kind of stretch everything back a little bit. Add my, what I call my pre-tension. starting to get what I call the candy cane effect. That's only due to the fact that the, uh, the machine is not perfectly level and that slurry is sort of uh, drifting downhill. <laughs> and that's what happens when it gets on something rotating. If I'm not happy with the randomness, see if I just add more tension on one, it changes. So I can adjust with the different bungees. Here's what it looks like after the 220 grit. It's starting to feel smooth now. Certainly no polish yet, no shine. I think most of the scratches are gone. There's still a couple of smaller ones in there, but you know what, this stone is pretty soft, so the next, the next grit which is the 400 grit, we'll take care of it. This is what it looks like after the 220. Our little tensioners. Pattern. It looks pretty good. I have to keep an eye on that and add tension as needed. So let this go for a while. This is the 400 grit. Well, here's how it looks after the 400 grit. Still some scratches, so I may run it for a while longer on the 400 grit. So here it is, back on the machine. Let it run another half hour. Check it again. Okay, here's how it looks after the 400 grit. I think most of the scratches are gone. Also, you can see a little bit of color in there. But I think the reason it looks this colorful now is because the rag that I wiped it down with might have had a little mineral oil in it. So it shouldn't look this dark at 400 grit. But anyway, the next grid's 1200. So it will look much better after that. But here, you want to look for any big scratches at this point because the next two I have are 1200 and 4000 and they will not get out any of these scratches. So this is what it's going to look like except hopefully a lot shinier. 
So let's get it on the jig. Tell I'm gonna to need to add some tension here. Let's try this one. The motion looks pretty good with the 1200 grit. So I'll let this go for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. I'll check it and see if it's ready for the final stage, which is the 4000 grit. Okay, here's what it looks like after the 1200 grit polishing cups. Kind of a dull shine. Not too interesting, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's okay. And here with the zooms in, you can see, again, just the dull shine. But it's just super, super smooth to the touch. So the next cup grid is 4,000, which should bring out the polish do that next. All right, you know the drill. See what it took for me to get that action the way I like it. It's it's really important to have these bungees around. Okay, it's been going now for maybe 30 minutes, 4,000 grit. I think it's time to stop, take it off, and see how it looks. It's hard to tell while it's wet, but I think you can see there should be a polish on it. Find out for sure. And here he is along with his little teammates. Not a great shine, but some of the rocks within the matrix took a decent shine. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make a, a sphere. For me, it was a fun weekend project. Now it's time to start on something new. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out my other videos.